welcome back to another 90 Day Fiance recap. This is my second time filming this and I was super duper hyper. I was like on one when I did my first recording and I was so hyper and actually really pretty damn annoying. And then somehow I filmed for an hour long. The footage never saved. I know I saved it but it never, I don't know what happened. And so I was just gonna use the audio part, but then the audio sucked too. So here I am re-recording the whole damn thing because I wanna give you guys premium content. That is how much I love you guys, all right? So if you're listening to this on a podcast, can you please give me a five-star review on iTunes, please? And write me something nice that I can read later when I'm feeling down. <laughs> Thank you. Violet. Are you pregnant with Riley's child? Violet is very emotional and she says because of her age and her health, her bad health, she could not keep the pregnancy. What? So then I was like, wait, is she saying that she terminated the pregnancy without even telling Riley? Because that is messed up. But no, they clarified later that she miscarried. Oh boy, uh, she was crying. She seemed very, very upset. And this makes me feel horrible for what I'm about to say. But remember in my last video, I said if she is lying about this pregnancy, which would be so awful, and she doesn't seem like an awful person. But if she is lying, the easiest out would be to tell everybody that she miscarried. That would be her narrative. She doesn't have to prove that she's pregnant right now. She doesn't have to prove if it's Riley's baby. She doesn't have to prove anything. And then she actually came out and said she miscarried. Now, could she be telling the truth? Absolutely. It could be a true story. We'll never know, okay? She only knows the truth. But if she lied, it's just such a horrible, horrible lie. And um, if anybody would lie about being pregnant and then miscarrying, like you need professional help. Now, Riley, he doesn't really feel anything. He's not attached. He's not sad. He just, it, it, he just seems so skeptical because he doesn't even know if it was his child in the first place. And then he doesn't even know if she was pregnant in the first place. Like he just doesn't really know what to think. And the fact that he thinks she's capable of lying about all of that I mean, I don't know. I initially thought Riley was a horrible person to even be accusing her of that, but then, I don't know. It just seems, it just, something just seems really off and it seems fishy. Um, they reveal that she's coming to the States and everybody's like super happy. They're like, oh my God, are you guys working things out? But no, she's coming on her own. It's, it has nothing to do with him. She got her own visa. She's gonna come to the States and Riley said he's open to meeting up to see if they can, I don't know, end things on a good note. Tiffany thinks that he's leaving his door wide open and that he wants to get back together with her. But honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're both very over it. And I just can't see them getting back together. Now, if they do, please do it off screen because I don't want to see it. Okay, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't care. Now it's Christian and Cleo's turn, and oh my god, how much more delusional can Christian get? So the main issue in the relationship, besides the fact that he comes from a very conservative family who is most likely anti-gay and anti-trans, besides that, the other problem is he flirts with women anywhere he goes, and his excuse is, I'm an extrovert. I love meeting new people. I strike up a conversation with anybody. So they play a clip of him talking to women, that group of women, and then Deborah, the girl that he invited over to Cleo's apartment to celebrate Thanksgiving together. You guys are just going to have to watch the video yourselves and tell me what you think. But in my opinion, he totally comes off like a creep. Now, the girl at the bar is here. She comes on stage and Sean wants to know, did you feel like he was flirting with you? She was like, 100%. I felt like he wanted to get to know me and to flirt with me and to see where things would go from here. And I would have to agree. First of all, he was at the bar. He spotted her and he was like looking at her. Oh, I'm oh I just had a visceral reaction. And he's really going to bring up the Steiner group, the Discord exclusive anonymous forum chat whatever the fuck and then he's all like yeah the steiners and i when we talk about getting laid our code word is getting steined mm. bro don't ever mention that again please 
Do not mention that again. If a guy were to say that to me, I would be like, whoa, you're an incel and you want to murder me. Now, I didn't see this scene at the bar when he was approaching Deborah. Oh, I just got goosebumps all over my body. I, it was so hard to watch. And then after his creepy conversation with her, he asks her to spend Thanksgiving with him and his girlfriend. Oh yeah, just come on over, come to my girlfriend's house and, uh, you know, have some turkey. I would think that you were lying or that you and your girlfriend were going to SA me, murder me, chop my body up into teeny tiny pieces and stuff it in the turkey. And then she says no because she's going to not be here. And he asks her for her Instagram. How is this not flirting? Like, even though he had no intention of anything romantic with that woman, you're coming off that way, bro. So you need some social classes. Like, you need to know how to talk to women when you're in a relationship. Actually, period. Because even if you were single, I would think that you were trying to kill me. So everybody continues to call Christian a flirt. Why do you hit on women? Why do you flirt with women everywhere you go? And he's like, that's just who I am. Oh, is it Christian? Well, then change. And then Einstein says, well, I don't treat people different based on the fact that they're women. <gasps> wow. Thank you so much, Christian. Oh my God. I bow to you. Thank you so much for treating us well. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, can I kiss your feet? Thank you. Oh my God. I forgot to mention that in that clip where he was at the bar, he said in his own words, that he's a wolf on the prowl. I'm kind of like my own, my own little, uh, little wolf on the prowl. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh my God, you're taking it out of context. How else did you mean it then, huh? A wolf on the prowl. And his response over and over again, I'm an extrovert. I crave human interaction. I love getting to know strangers and meeting new people. I can't help that I'm this way. Change. You can do it. Change. Okay? He says he's a friendly guy. He likes to entertain people. And Dempsey's like, okay, there's a very big difference between an extrovert and a guy who flirts. And then Tyree chimes in, oh God, why am I not surprised? And he's like, well, I think Deborah took it wrong. You know, I think he was just being friendly. Oh God, Tyree. Now I will say if Tyree said the exact same things that Christian said, he wouldn't come off like a creep. I don't know what it is about Christian. It might be his face, his hair, his demeanor, his eyes, everything about him, but he comes off like a creeper. Then someone brings up, then why are you only flirting with women? And he goes, oh my God, women are half the population. It's like a coin toss. They're 50% of the population. It's a, it's a coin flip. <laughs> Really? So are you saying that every time you flip a coin, it just happens to land on women? Jasmine chimes in and he shuts it down immediately. He's like, oh no, I am not going to take this from you, you hypocrite. You cannot judge me considering you reached out to Dane to talk about your SEX life with your current partner, with your old partner. And Amanda, the provider, I want a provider, Amanda. She chimes in, which... I hate to say that I absolutely agreed with her. She told him that he seeks validation. He wants to know that he still has it, that he could still pull women and that women still like him. Um, he's delude. I, I, okay, first of all, I think she's absolutely right. And in his delusional mind, he probably thinks these women are into him and want to talk to him and are interested. And the poor little wilted flower thinks he's being attacked. Oh, no. Ew, I'm being attacked right now. <laughs> I, f I feel like I'm being attacked right now for just being who I am. Dude, every single person on that stage, except for Tyree, thinks you're the problem. So if you are the common denominator, then you are the problem. Like Amanda, the provider. Misha asks Cleo, if he doesn't change, are you going to be happy in this relationship? And she doesn't know. She's like, I need to process this. I need to, you know, think about this. I, I really don't think I can handle it. And uh, Christian interrupts like he always does. Everyone's like, let her answer. I would say the answer is no. It, I don't think Christian, he will. Christian, don't answer. answer. I was, let I don't her answer. answer. And Sean does what she does best. She goes to her go-to line, her favorite line. Well, I don't think we're going to resolve this tonight. So moving on. <laughs> I don't think we're going to resolve this tonight. So let's just move on. 
And then Christian asks Cleo a very important question, super important. And he goes, Cleo, um, would you like kind of like, um, I don't know. I mean, are, are you willing to marry me? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> what was that? So Riley took the words right out of my mouth. He was like, huh? Was that a proposal? And he was like, no, 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 this isn't the official proposal. I just wanted to ask, like, oh, my God, as soon as Cleo heard the word marriage, everything, like all rational thinking went out the door. She just heard marriage. She clung on to it for dear life. And she was smiling from ear to ear. She was like, <gasps> Christian, you are the apple of my eye. You're the sun to my moon. You're the blood that pumps my heart. I love you so much. Yes, I will marry you. When you actually propose, blah, blah. I mean, <sighs> I just don't understand how five minutes ago we were talking about how he flirts with women at clubs and bars and wherever he goes. He always has to talk to women and Cleo doesn't want that. And then right after he kind of half ass proposes, not really. But when he asks her the marriage question, all of that goes out the door. She forgot about it. She was like, <gasps> marriage, marriage, marriage. <laughs> Uh, oh my god i don't get it like do you see my eyes like i'm so tired of this shit backstage riley tells christian wow deborah was hot and christian's like eh she's got curly hair not my type she's got, she's got curly hair not my type <laughs> christian you know there's something called a hair straight in that I don't know how this happened, but somehow when I try to express my annoyance, I go into my Amanda character. <laughs> Jasmine has a revelation. She's like, oh, yeah, maybe Christian, you and I should start considering our partner's feelings when we contact the opposite gender. <gasps> you think, Jasmine? Good job. <laughs> I do love Jasmine's love for Cleo. She was like, she's like my little sister. And if Christian uh, messes with her or breaks her heart, I will fuck him up. Yeah, Jasmine, you and everybody else. Yeah, we, we all want to join you. I'm going to go after your ass. Next is America's favorite couple, David and Sheila. Now, since filming, she opened up a small store where she sells coffee, chips, snacks, cookies, beverages, all that jazz. And the name of their store is David and Sheila. Oh, that's so cute. Um, Y'all, I cannot get over how good David looks. He looks so good with that facial hair. Like, I, I was watching the tell-all and I was like, damn, he kind of cute. Like, he's cute. He's got a very good face. And I think his hair thickened or he dyed it. So it got rid of his grays, which kind of looked like it blended in with his skin color. So <laughs> he just looked like he had no hair in the middle. But now I think he dyed it, so it looks like he, his hair is fuller, thicker, and the facial hair. Ooh, he looks great. We learned that David met up with a lawyer about Sheila's visa, and I guess it can take up to three to four years. Oh my god, I was heartbroken for them. I just want them to be together already. They've been through enough. Um, and David calls Sheila to tell her this, and they're both crying. Oh, it was so sad. I think we all just want them to be together as soon as possible and live happily ever after. But we do get some good news. And uh, the good news is David was able to fix Sheila's family home. Yes. They had a very short video clip of the exterior. So Sheila has a nice new roof. They have concrete walls. I really wish we saw the inside. I hope they have um, good quality flooring and a safe staircase. But she seemed super happy. And so I think we're all happy for her. But then I was sad again when David said he works 85 hours a week. He should not have to work that much to support his family and just get by. Like, Oh, I really wish he could make a bigger income. How can he raise his income? He's got to he's got to get a different job, right? Then Sean brings up the interpreter, Amy, and they play back the scene where Amy was talking shit about Sheila, <laughs> about how Sheila didn't learn sign language. <laughs> And then they play the scene where Sheila's crying by herself in the interview. She doesn't want David to know she's crying. She doesn't want David to know that she's jealous. And that actually got me bawling my eyes out because it was in that moment when I realized, wow, Sheila is very selfless. She didn't want to start a fight or an argument about her being jealous. 
I don't know why was he why he choosing the young one. I'm afraid what if David want to go with her, not me. So in front of him, she put on a strong face, but when in reality she was hurting and in pain, and that's what broke my heart because she was in pain alone. And it's such a vast contrast to how Jasmine reacts when she's jealous. Oh, I know that feeling. Sean asks, and I was so upset about this, Sean asks, so have you been in contact with Amy? Why did they have to ask that? Like, just leave them alone, okay? You know, this whole time, the preview for the tell-all, it made it seem like David was having a side relationship with Amy, right? But I did not believe it for a second. I knew David would never do that to Sheila. And just to see it now, it's so dumb. And I really wish they didn't have to do that. Like, leave them alone, okay? Let's just leave David and Sheila alone. Let them be happy and in peace. Back to Gino and Jasmine. Let's talk about the prenup. We learned Gino never asked his ex-wife to sign a prenup. Now, while he was trying to explain why he never asked his ex-wife, but he asked Jasmine, I wasn't listening to anything that came out of his mouth because all I could focus on were his hands. They were very pale and they had a bluish tint to them. I was like, is he okay? Like, are his hands gonna fall off? Did somebody cut off his circulation? Why are his hands that color? You guys, look. They replay the scenes of Jasmine going to the Poo Nana doctor to get it smaller. <laughs> and she actually did go through with that surgery. I have a super high sexual drive. And when we do have sex, you know, can't even finish. So I'm hoping if my Poo Nana gets tighter, he will be able to inside of me. <laughs> and they tested it out after and they couldn't do it because apparently it was too small. His banana would not fit into the newly rejuvenated teeny tiny, teeny tiny poo nana. Her poo nana was just too tight. <laughs> the banana doesn't fit in the donut. So I don't know if it's better now after she healed, but she said it was painful. And I can't imagine electively choosing to do that. Jasmine confirms her golden shower happened in the hotel bathtub. He made me to pee on his chest. I gave him the golden shower. <laughs> so gross. Everyone else was like, ew. And she was like, I know. This is why I don't trust those hot tubs because people do disgusting things in there. But you just used it to do the nasty thing. Make it make sense. Statler commends them for trying something new. Gino doesn't remember a thing. He's like, well, I don't remember a thing. Oh, okay. There's 30 minutes left of this tell-all. And finally, we get to Rosvon and Amanda. And this is where it got juicy. Thanks to her sister, Amber. Thank you. You are the hero that we did not know we needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First and foremost, Rosvon looked like he did not want to be there. He did not give two shits. He didn't care about anything. <laughs> he didn't smile. He didn't say anything. He was just there. Rosvon wanted everybody to know that he's not in a good mood because he wasn't expecting filming to take this long and therefore he missed his striptease 101 class. That's why he's in that mesh shirt because he was going to learn how to rip it off. <laughs> And Sean asks, are you guys still together? And they say, no, they're not together. We are at a point now, we're not together, but we're, we're friends. You've broken up, yes. Who's surprised? Anyone? Anyone? Are you surprised? Are you surprised? No. However, I was surprised that they broke up right after she got to America, like right after she left Romania. And according to Amanda, Rosvan was all of a sudden 100% focused on his career and he didn't have time for the relationship. Jasmine chimes in and she's like, mm, I think it was because you were a horrible bitch to him. And she's like, that's not me being a bitch. That's just me being sarcastic. Like the guy I'm with has to have a really thick skin because yeah, I can be an effing bitch, but that's just my humor because he's a provider. <laughs> and Jasmine's like, no, I don't think it was your humor. I think it was because you were a bitch. And she's laughing the whole time Jasmine's talking. And then she tells Jasmine, you don't know me. So 
kindly or respectfully shut the fuck up, okay, provider? Respectfully, you don't know me. So, like, shut the fuck up. And Jasmine's like, she looked stunned. And she didn't say anything to Amanda. She composed herself. She was respectful. And she was just like, okay, I don't think people are going to agree. And I'm like, where is the Jasmine that we saw this whole entire time? She is so different. It's crazy, actually. Like, I have to remind myself that this is the same Jasmine. I will say, during the tell-all, she came off extremely likable. Like, I actually really like Jasmine, and I could see myself being friends with her. And then that made me wonder, was she putting on a show this whole time? Like, is she just a performer? You know, I do believe that she does have some mental struggles and insecurities, and she is very dramatic. I do feel like that is genuine, but I think she maybe turns it up a hundred notches when they're filming. Like, I think, I don't know if she's that extreme when they're not filming. Yeah, I don't know what to think. I'm very perplexed, but uh, as far as the tell-all, she was really wonderful. She gave her opinions. She asked a bunch of questions. She was charming. She was funny. Uh, she was honest. And uh, I'm just so confused. Every single time they showed Razvan on camera, he looked like he didn't give a fuck. He didn't even want to be there. And I was so confused by his demeanor because at one point he said he wasn't sure if he could be 100% committed to her. Like, where the hell did that come from? I thought you were 100% committed and you were acting like you wanted to go to America, stay with her, play house basically with her kids and be one big happy family. So were we bamboozled by Razvan as well? I think so. I think he played us. Well, not all of us, but he played me, okay? I fell for those muscles and those abs and those luscious lips. I did. I did. I thought he was a genuine guy, but I think... They both used each other for their separate goals or whatever. Now, I don't think he completely faked it. I think he really did like her, but I don't think it was anywhere near what he portrayed on the show. Like, I think that was an act. Now, Amanda tried to spin a little story about how Rosvan was controlling. She was like, Rosvan? Um, trying to control my social media and try to tell me who I can chat with and who I couldn't. And like, it was just kind of controlling. And her sister shut that down real fast. Her sister was like, well, there were reasons why he put those rules in place, Amanda. And Amanda gave her the death stare. Okay, she was like, relax. Okay, relax. Relax. There were reasons. Relax. But what, Relax. what information can okay. you give us about? If looks could kill, honey, Amber would be dead. And then Amanda shut up real fast. And I was like, no, don't relax. Stop. But thank God, Sean Robinson decided to do her job today. And she asked some follow up questions that we needed. And then Amber started to talk more. And she was like, well, there was one guy in particular that Amanda would constantly talk to like every single day. And she would flirt with him and things got romantic. And Amanda goes, relax, okay, relax, okay, provider, relax, provider, I want a provider, relax. And Razvan is shook, but not really, he, okay, he's not shook, he doesn't care. He's like, oh, well, I didn't know this until now, okay, I don't care. You know what, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, because it seems like his tears were genuine, and I'm not going to sit here and act like that man doesn't have feelings and emotions, but... It doesn't make sense to me that all of a sudden you realize after you got what you wanted that this is not what you want. I had to kind of agree with Riley in the sense that something just wasn't adding up. It just wasn't making sense. It was confusing. I do not think he used Amanda just to get in bed with her. Um, maybe Riley's projecting a little. Uh, there's just something weird going on. We find out that he's going to the United States despite their breakup because, well, duh, he's wanted to go to the States forever and ever. It was his childhood dream to go to America and live there. So that's not surprising. But here is what was super surprising and made me side eye the fuck out of him. He asked Amanda. Now, mind you, this is after they already broke up. OK, he asked Amanda if he could stay with her, with her kids at her house until he found his own place. Are you kidding? 
Hell no. Okay, I don't even like Amanda, but I hope she said no, because that is ridiculous. We find out Amanda said no. Thank God. But why would Rosvon ask to stay? That makes no sense. Did he want to film another season? Did he want to keep this going? He, she has kids who just lost their father and you have the audacity to want to. OK, I know some of you guys are going to be like, well, she was going to have him move in. No, who cares? That was when they were together. They're not together anymore. It's just weird and kind of shady. I got like the ick from him, especially because they were broken up and he was just like, oh, you know, we can try things again. Like, why? Why would you even? Seriously, it's I swear it's to be on the show again. And to me, I interpreted their breakup as mutual, but maybe he initiated it first and she didn't fight it. And we later learn that it's because she's seeing someone. She has a brand new boy. And it's got to be that guy Amber was referring to, the guy that she uh, found on TikTok and was talking to him every single day while she was dating Rosvon. And Rosvon told her not to talk to him so much. It's probably that guy. In conclusion, I think Amanda is very emotionally unintelligent. She's very immature. She literally acts like the way I acted when I was 14. Okay, she acts like a 14 year old. She talks like a 14 year old. She loves like a 14 year old. And so, yeah, that that's her. <laughs> Rosvon is a player. Okay, he is an actual F boy. Oh my God, I cannot believe I fell for his act. And remember that uh, episode towards the end where he cried when they were about to break up? And I'm realizing now that those tears he shed were not for Amanda. They were for America, the land of the free Michael. <laughs> so yeah, I think they liked each other, but they used each other as well. He used her to get on the show and for clout and to get all new types of poo-poo nana in his DMs. And she used him for a rebound and just to have fun and to explore and la 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 la. Last and very least, the catfish story that nobody asked for. Listen, I think Tyree's a great guy. I think he deserves love. I think he's genuine. He's sweet. And I truly hope he finds love. And I wish him nothing but the best. Now, with that being said, I stopped feeling bad for him a long time ago. A long time ago. There's so many things that he just, his delusion was too much. Too much. A producer on the show comes out and she uh, shares her story about how she found out that Carmela was a catfish. But let's be real, we all knew she was a catfish as soon as he said he's never video chatted her in the four years they've been talking. Speaking of producer, how do I become a producer on that show? I would love to work on that show. That would be a dream come true. But I don't think they would want me. Also, if I was a producer, I feel like they would not allow me to have this YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay, back to Tyree. They play a conversation between the producer and Christian the scammer. And I did feel kind of bad for him during this part because he looked so uncomfortable. That scammer was such a douche. Because, okay, this is another new thing we learned. Remember how he went to Barbados to meet up with, quote, Carmela, and she never showed? Well, the scammer told Tyree to get her some clothes and cash and to leave it somewhere like, I don't know, at some drop off point. And the scammer was watching him the whole time. He was there watching him drop off the clothes and the cash at the designated place and then ghosted him. I did say to come because I needed clothes and also sell your phone. I, I just told him bring the clothing to this particular store and he left the clothing there. And he kept talking to her after this. That's where I'm like, no, this is too far. This is too much. How? You're a good guy, but this is, no, come on. Come on, Tyree. I'm not going to roast him. He probably feels bad enough. And then Sean wants to call him. She's like, Tyree, we found his new number. Would it be okay to call him? Why? And he's like, okay, it's fine. It goes to voicemail. Please leave your message after the tone. So then Riley says what we're all thinking. And he's like, we're going to find you, motherfucker. We're going to get you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we also found out that Christian, a.k.a. Carmela, fake Carmela, asked Tyree for spicy pictures and he sent them. Tyree sent spicy pictures to a scammer and it had his face in it. 
And he was so afraid that he was going to get blackmailed by the scammer, that he was going to threaten to expose all these private photos if he didn't pay up. And I can't even begin to imagine how stressful that might have been for Tyree. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But you know what? With AI and all AI can do, you can honestly just say, that's not me. That's AI. That's not really me. I don't look like that. He just put my face in a random body. Like, you could say that. Whew. And then Sean goes, what would you like to say to Christian in case he's watching? Oh, God. These are just so, such dumb questions. But it's okay, Sean Robinson. I, I do love you. And Tyree, in true Tyree fashion, says, I'm going to pray for him because he needs it. I mean, just a just a really genuinely nice guy. I, he's just very sweet. And I truly wish him the best. I hope he finds love when the time is right, when he is ready, locally, in person, in real life. <laughs> He said he is single, but he is not looking because he needs to self-reflect. And I think that is the right answer. So good luck to you, Tyree. And with that, it's a wrap. This is the end of Before the 90 Day Season 6. I think it's Season 6. And oh, I totally forgot the studio audience was there. That was absolutely pointless. Please do not ever do this again. I thought we were going to get questions at the end from the audience members. But no, we didn't. So what was the point of the live audience? What the fuck? One by one, the cast members are leaving the tell-all and they do a short, quick exit interview. And I love how Christian thought he redeemed himself. I'm actually feeling pretty good. You know, in the end, I think, you know, Cleo and I had a very good resolution. I, I mean, I swear, he is so delusional. His head is so far up his delusional ass, he can't think straight. In what world does he think he redeemed himself? <laughs> Statler says she's gonna go on and sell her stuff so she can do hashtag van life with Dempsey. Okay. Amanda has a new boyfriend that she's seeing, and he is like a provider. And I didn't tell Ross Vaughn because I didn't want to offend him. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And then Gino and Jasmine are going home to film a brand new season of 90 Day Fiance premiering next Sunday. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you guys in the next recap. If you are listening to this on a podcast, please go to iTunes and give it a five-star rating and write me something nice. I would greatly appreciate it. And I love you guys so much and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Bye.